In this Middle Earth mystery series, I've attempted to tackle some of the greatest mysteries in Tolkien's Legendarium. Some have been relatively easy, some have been quite difficult, but looking back, I've pretty much always had something to work with. There's always been something of substance. Today, this changes. Today, we talk about Khand. If you look at the map of Middle-earth in the bottom right corner, far to the east, you'll see the name Khand. It's seemingly unimportant, it's a far off place where no stories ever take place. So what makes it interesting enough to be worth a video? Well, what makes Khand interesting is the fact that it even exists at all. I'll get to that shortly. For those who don't know, we know very little about Khand. It's a land southeast of Mordor, and it's inhabited by men only known as Variags. What Khand looks like and what the Variags look like is completely unknown. The first mention of Khand is during the Wayne Rider Wars. The Eastern Wayne Riders warred with the men of Khand for a time, but they eventually signed a truce and decided to attack Gondor together. The next and only other mention of Khand is during the Battle of Pelennor Fields. The Variags are amongst the reserves Gothmog throws into battle after the destruction of the Witch King. And that's legitimately it, trust me. I tried to find as much as I could. In the end, I discovered that Khand receives very few mentions across all of Tolkien's writings. In the entirety of History of Middle-earth, it receives four mentions. In the Unfinished Tales, two. And in The Lord of the Rings, plus its appendices, it receives four. One in the story, one in the appendices, and two in the index. Ultimately, it's one of the mentions in History of Middle-earth that proves to be the most interesting. Khand is listed as one of the three known words from the languages of Men of Darkness. The other two words are Mumak and Variag. But this only adds to the mystery of Khand. Why does it appear on a map of Middle-earth? And this is why Khand stands out. On the map of Middle-earth, most places have names which fall into just a few categories. They're either Sindarin names, or they're Westron and Northman names that have been translated into English, Old English, or Celtic. Or in the case of Gundabad, it's a Kuzdal name. And then there's Khand, a lone name which belongs to an unknown Easterling language. One thing you have to understand about the Legendarium is that, in-universe, Tolkien did not write it. It was merely found and translated by him. In-universe, the main writers are Bilbo and Frodo. They are the ones who wrote the Red Book of Westmarch, which includes The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings, as well as various translated legends from other peoples, mainly elves. Thus, it's very likely that the map of Middle-earth that we see, whilst translated by Tolkien, was actually drawn by Bilbo. And this means that Bilbo knows of Khan. Of course, Bilbo hasn't travelled to Khan, he's learned of Khan at second hand. But who has he learned it from? Well, we know that the Gondorians were seemingly aware of Khan back during the Wainrider Wars, so it's possible that Bilbo learned some Gondorian history. That being said, I'm not sure he would have had access to Gondor's history, given he never travelled there. The library at Rivendell would be extensive, but given the distance and severe lack of contact between the two places, I'm unsure if a recent chronicle about Gondorian history would have made its way there. And if Bilbo did learn it from Gondorian history, then that begs another question. Why do the Gondorians specifically know or specifically mention Khand? Remember, Gondor has had extensive dealings with Rune and the Easterlings, and Harad and the Haradrim. But despite all those dealings, their actual names never made it into the history books. Harad just means South, Rune just means East. Yet when it comes to Khand, not only is the name of the place known, but so is the name of the people who dwelt there. Once again, it's a standout. However, it's possible that Bilbo never actually learned this name from Gondorian history, because there is one person who Bilbo knew who may have travelled to Khand, and that person is Aragorn. During his younger years, Aragorn travelled extensively through Middle-earth, even venturing far into the east and south, where he described the stars as strange. So it's definitely possible that Aragorn travelled to Khand, and for one reason or another, chose to specifically remember the name of the place and the people who dwelt there. He then proceeded to share this information with Bilbo, and alone of all the places and peoples of the east and south, the Variags of Khand got their own mention in the history of Middle-earth. Because this has been such a short video, I want to talk about two adaptions of the Variags of Khand, because I think they are very clever in the way that they use the barest of information that Tolkien gave us to give us a little picture of maybe what Khand was like. The first is in Divide and Conquer, a Lord of the Rings mod for Medieval 2 Total War. In this mod, the faction of Khand are a cavalry-based faction, 
very much inspired by Turkic or Mongol hordes. Obviously, the name Khand evokes this image itself, being very similar to the word Khan. And in the final phase of the Wainrider War, the Wainriders bring with them a great force of cavalry, far larger than had been expected. This is after the Wainriders allied with the men of Khand, which can definitely give the impression that this large force of cavalry was actually from Khand. The other adaption is in Lord of the Rings Online. In Lotro, the Variags differ from the Easterlings and the Haradrim. Instead of being devout servants of Sauron, they're actually just mercenaries who were fighting for coin. This is obviously inspired by the name Variag, which shares a very close resemblance to the real-world Varangian, who were Viking mercenaries who served in the Byzantine Empire. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it or at least found it interesting. This is probably the nerdiest video I've ever done, I seriously felt like a Tolkien detective, which would be an incredibly name lame for a YouTube channel, but would still be less lame than Darth Gandalf. Cheers, farewell, and remember, you've wasted several minutes of your life that you'll never get back listening to my shitty advice at the end of a video.